Summertime means the Milky Way galaxy is rising over the early morning horizon, and the Galaxy S25 has some very impressive features to help you capture it. But how does this newest Samsung smartphone measure up to previous models? The results are not as straightforward as you'd think. But before we show you the comparisons, let's take you through the ways you can use your Galaxy S25 to photograph the Milky Way. The first thing you're going to need is some sort of tripod and a way to safely mount your phone to it. All of the shots we'll be taking are long exposures, so it will be crucial to keep your smartphone steady. Here I have the Samsung Galaxy S25 Plus, which features the exact same camera systems and image processor as the base model Galaxy S25, so the results would be identical. The camera system for the Galaxy S25 Ultra is quite different, but we'll talk more on that later. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, during the summer months, you can catch the Milky Way by pointing your camera in a southern direction around midnight. It's always best to be as far away from city lights as possible, but feel free to experiment with these cool features wherever you might be. I'm doing these tests out in the middle of the Utah desert where the skies are almost always clear at night. When you open the camera app in a darkly lit area, the software automatically identifies that the scene would benefit from the smartphone's night shot intelligent mode, which you can see indicated here. Samsung smartphones have had this feature for years, but let's see how it works for us right out of the box on this latest model. As soon as you tap the shutter, you will see this warning to hold the camera still as a three second timer counts down. As you can see from this preview, that doesn't capture very much light. So let's see if we can't do better by switching to the dedicated night mode. If you haven't added this to your modes bar, you can find it by scrolling all the way over to more and then tapping on night. You can see it trying to calculate how long it needs to expose for here. In this darkness, it will automatically choose eight seconds. So let's give that a try. Same as before, we get a hold still indicator and a countdown timer. Well, this is noticeably better, if still pretty dark. So let's see what we can get if we max it out in this mode. If the smartphone detects that it is not moving, then the option to go as high as 25 seconds becomes available. Let's fast forward through that countdown. Hey, that's looking better. We're finally starting to see the edge of the water's reflection and some of the galaxy's gas and dust clouds are starting to show some interesting detail, but we still have a few more modes to try. Let's hop out of night mode and head over to pro mode. In this mode, we do have a little bit extra control. We'll set the ISO to the maximum of 3200 and the shutter speed to the maximum of 30 seconds and we'll see what that gets us. Well, that's definitely brighter in some areas than the night mode, but I'm not ready to say it's giving us more details. I think this smartphone can do better. If you go over to the modes found in more, you'll see this expert raw feature. If you haven't used it before, you'll have to download it from the Galaxy Store, which you'll be directed to just by tapping on the icon. Once you have it downloaded and installed, you can open it and see a similar interface to the pro mode with some additions. It's usually best to set the camera to capture in RAW and JPEG for added flexibility in photo editing, but we'll talk more on that later. Let's start by maxing out our capture settings once more with 3200 ISO and 30 seconds of open shutter. Now take a look at that. Way more detail in both the sky and the foreground using this mode. There are definitely some quirks here, but this is actually a pretty fun Milky Way image to have captured with a smartphone. But believe it or not, we're not done yet. Because in this expert raw mode, we also have some pretty cool features that can be found in the labs function, accessed by tapping on this beaker icon. You'll see a few options pop up, but the one we'll be looking at is this constellation icon, which puts the app into astro photo mode. This mode is almost fully automated, but there is one pretty cool thing they included that you might want to use. If you tap on this little icon, you could actually toggle a constellation overlay. As you can see, it provides a real-time look at where known stars are as you pan the camera. This could definitely help you find the area of the sky you're looking for, but I should warn you that it is definitely not the most reliable digital planetarium. Sometimes it will just randomly lose its calibration, so be sure to keep it away from magnetic or large metallic objects for best results. As you can see here, you are given three very basic options, short, medium, and long. I have not noticed a significant difference in detail between each of the options, and the long options seem to just open the door to more noise from passing objects, so we're just going to use short. When you're ready and centered, tap the shutter. You'll now see a three minute countdown. Hmm, not that short after all. But wait a second, how can it take a three minute exposure? Isn't that just going to result in huge star streaks? Well, take a look for yourself. Have you ever seen such a cool result from a pocket-sized camera? This is honestly the most impressive Milky Way photo I've ever captured using a smartphone. But how is it doing it? Our first clue is found in the metadata. Instead of three minutes of exposure time, we're given 24 and a half seconds. How does that make any sense? Here's what your Samsung smartphone is actually doing. During the three minute exposure period, the camera will capture several different exposures. Each exposure is then laid one on top of the other in a stack and analyzed for similarities and differences. 
any detail that can be found in all of the images will be retained and emphasized. Anything that only appears in one image will be treated as noise and removed by the algorithm. To compensate for the Earth's rotation, the camera's software will automatically detect what is the sky and what is the foreground based on movement and separate the two. Once the algorithm has successfully aligned the details from the slightly offset sky images, the two parts are combined into the final image that we see. This process, called detail stacking, is actually the process that NASA space instruments have been using for decades. It's an extremely clever way to get the most out of a small sensor, and due to use case constraints, smartphone cameras have remained some of the smallest. But how do we know this isn't just another case of the Samsung Moon fiasco, where the camera app just uses AI to overlay details that are saved on board? That's a totally fair question, and I think the answer can be found by comparing separate shots from separate days. There is more than stars floating through the sky, like these clouds that smudged up one of my first attempts, but also planets that will have different positions every night. In my experience, each of these shots is a true reflection of the night sky that was available to me at the specific time and place, and it would be exceptionally difficult for any algorithm to compensate for so many factors. I suppose I should also briefly mention this astro portrait mode as well. It's similar to astro photo, but it just begins by having you place a subject in the frame while the LED shines, then having you remove them from the frame for the rest of the capture. The results are interesting, I guess, but I don't imagine a lot of people will be using this feature. But hey, if you love the idea, more power to you. Astro Portrait is a new feature only available on the S25 models. But on that note, we have to mention that this isn't the first Samsung Galaxy smartphone to ship with impressive Galaxy capturing features. The Expert RAW mode was first made available on the Samsung Galaxy S20, but the Astro Photo mode inside the Labs function didn't come until the Galaxy S23. So have they improved on this feature with the new model? To find out, I captured an identical set of photos using the exact same modes I just showed you using the Samsung Galaxy S24 at the exact same time. I gotta be honest with you, the results were surprisingly mixed. Let's go through each of the modes. In the regular night shot mode from the basic camera app, the Galaxy S24 image comes out a little bit darker on the foreground, but noticeably more detailed for the Galaxy's dust and gas clouds, and far better star fidelity too. Kind of unexpected, but this is an unusual use for this mode, and neither of these images is really usable, so let's move on to the next set. For dedicated night mode, at 8 seconds, these both look terrible, but for different reasons. It's like the S25 is trying to create details algorithmically, while the S24 is working way too hard to smooth out any and all noise. We wouldn't use these images either, so on to the next. Whoa! At the maximum 25 seconds for dedicated night mode, the S24 suddenly pulls way ahead. Way more details, way better foreground, and just a much brighter image. It appears that at these settings, the S24 uses a 1600 ISO, where the S25 uses a 1250 ISO. That may be the whole explanation, but whatever the case may be, I'm not likely to use the image from the newer model here, while I might actually post the one from the S24 on like a vacation story. Let's see if things get any better in pro mode. Actually, no, I'd have to say not. There is almost no difference in the output of these two cameras in this mode, except that the S24 gives us slightly more color. Both are working way too hard to smooth out detail. Not very pro, if you ask me. Then I guess it's time to see what we get out of the base mode of Expert RAW. Okay, that's actually pretty good from the S25, but I have no idea how the S24 ended up so different. Even with some help from Photoshop, you're just not getting any more detail out of this overexposed image. Now you would almost certainly still get a really great image from this model if you just reduce the ISO to something more reasonable, but it does beg the question of how the calibration between these two got so off. If you edit the S25 image, you definitely have something worthy of posting in my opinion. Great star fidelity and pretty good foreground detail. I guess that brings us to the final image. You'll immediately notice very similar color and exposure from both images, but the S25 definitely pulls away in terms of detail and sharpness. I was honestly very excited by the result the first time I used this feature. To be clear, both are great images to get out of a smartphone for crying out loud, but the obvious choice is the Galaxy S25 image. I guess the newer AI-oriented processor is actually good for something. Some of you might be wondering though, how does my current Galaxy S model stack up to the new stuff? Well, for those of you who haven't upgraded in a while, I went the extra mile on this one just for you guys. And I'm actually glad I did because it bore out some more unexpected outcomes. The Samsung Galaxy S4 did have a night mode, but in the desert at 2 a.m., you might as well paint the lens black. I liked this phone a lot, but its days are clearly over. Seriously, guys, if you haven't upgraded from this one, it's just time. I also brought the Galaxy S9 and S22 along for the ride, and the S22 gives us a much brighter image in pro mode. To be fair, the S9 is limited to a 10-second exposure, where the S22 does up to 30 seconds. Interestingly enough, 
the S22 gives us a little more detail in Pro Mode than the S25, and there's a lot more to the story here. Allow me to draw your attention to something these side-by-side -side images expose. When you zoom in, you'll immediately notice two things. The S25 image looks like it has been smoothed out, and it doesn't show any of this color noise. This is clearly the work of a post-processing algorithm. To be fair, the S22 will also do this to a smaller extent to the additional JPEG image when your camera app is set to record both RAW and JPEG images in Pro Mode. It's strange that the option to record RAW and JPEG in this mode only came to the S25 after an incremental software update, but what is really interesting is how none of the quote RAW images outside of Pro Mode are true RAW images. I'm serious, none of them. As we now compare the first set of images recorded in the expert RAW mode, all of them show some very strong software noise reduction artifacting, and it's honestly kind of gross. Even if the smoothing didn't give it away, you will always be able to tell from sensor color noise that true RAW images from a sensor this size produces. The resolution also has a few more pixels in the Pro RAW image, which again tells us that this is true sensor RAW. I understand why Samsung wants to clean up the noise for users, especially with how much they are harping on AI technology these days, but it's not terribly honest to run those algorithms on a captured image, repackage it as a digital negative or DNG file, and then say that it is a raw image. In fact, for some of these images, you actually get way better results from editing the JPEG image, which defeats the whole purpose of having raw images. We'll get into more of the editing side in just a moment, but the bottom line is if you're interested in raw control, this isn't it. And we should all be speaking out to Samsung asking them to bring back true sensor raw. Let's give photographers the control. Now, if we just take the rest of these images for what they are, accepting that we will not be dealing with true raw detail, it's pretty interesting that in some ways you might prefer the S22 image to the S25. The stars are definitely more resolved and brighter, and the foreground is noticeably brighter and honestly less smoothed out by the algorithm. From the big picture view though, the S25 is a more true to life representation of the gas clouds for sure, and color reproduction here is a lot more authentic as well. With later updates, the S22 now has the astrophoto feature, but unlike the S24 and S25, this model uses four minutes of capture time on the short setting. And while the output is still impressive, it's not as bright or detailed as the result we get from the S25. So there you have it. If you're still walking around with something like the S22, you can still capture some fun images of the night sky. That being said, if you were thinking about the upgrade, you would have good reason, but there are a few things you should know. As mentioned before, these raw images are not really raw images, and both the mobile and desktop versions of Adobe Photo Editing apps are going to have some issues with these repackaged DNG files, making it so in many cases you're actually better off just editing the JPEG versions in order to have more control of the lighting and maintaining color capture. Even Samsung's own built-in image editor goofs up the color, so just keep all of that in mind. Ultimately, this is still by far the best smartphone camera system I've ever tested for capturing images of our galaxy. A suiting pronouncement for a brand built on the very word. And here are the best images from each model after a little bit of editing in Lightroom Mobile. I really do like what we were able to capture with these smartphones. It almost makes me forgive Samsung for removing the SD card slot. Almost. You will definitely be seeing me post more images to my social media using this feature, and I hope some of you start experimenting with it too. Now, there may very well be some advantages to the S25 Ultra model that are of interest. I've attempted to capture images of the Lagoon Nebula using the telephoto lens on this model, but the periscope zoom on the Ultra would definitely be an improvement on this. It looks like some Ultra users have had some fun capturing nebulae, but as you can see, we're still a long way from replacing amateur telescope setups. It's great that smartphone manufacturers are still focused on innovating the camera systems. I can't complain about all the machine learning features labeled as AI that we have coming to these devices. I really have enjoyed some of them, but I also hope that we don't become overly reliant on AI processing. Some of what makes photography fun is the beauty found in natural flaws. So which smartphones do you think could outperform these Samsung cameras? Leave me a comment so I can look into testing them. As is always the case in the summer, we have more camera test videos in the works. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.